Hey, 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 it's Triple A Wednesday, which stands for Ask Alyssa Anything. This is my weekly Q&A session where I pop into the comments and weigh in on all your questions and concerns related to writing, editing, and publishing. Some of you have been wondering where Luca has been in my latest videos. I promise he's still around. He is just for some reason now hiding when I film my videos, so he's been a little camera shy. We'll see if in the next couple of weeks he'll be able to come out. Before we get into the great questions today, two quick pieces of housekeeping. Number one, if you can hit that thumbs up button, it's something that takes about a second but really helps out my channel. And number two, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider joining our amazing community of authors here. That will ensure that you don't miss out on all my next videos, including my weekly deep dives into specific writing techniques and insights into the publishing industry. Here's the first question. I have a question. When a chapter you write is too long, do you divide it in half or do you cut things down or leave it be? If you have a chapter that's running too long, there are different ways you can address this depending on the manuscript's needs. First, I recommend seeing where the scene actually ends. Do you have two big scenes all lumped into one single chapter? If so, you might consider moving the chapter break to come after the first major scene and then moving the next major scene in that chapter to the next chapter. If the chapter only contains one continuous scene, then you will want to look at either condensing the scene or if it's really justifying the length that it currently is, it might be okay to keep this chapter a bit longer than other chapters, especially if it's not overly jarring. I don't want you to cut from the scene just because you want the chapter to be a specific length. However, if you do identify certain slow areas or fluff in the scene, then it could be worth trying to see if you could shave it down a bit so that the scene contained in this chapter is not quite as long as the others, so you don't disrupt the flow of the reading experience and the reader's expectations for the chapter length. Here's the next question. When drafting my query letter, should I include a photo? I hate to play the race card, but I know publishers and agents love diversity nowadays, and I'm what they would call diverse. It's not standard to include an author photo with your query, and depending on how agents have their query management system set up, you may or may not even be able to attach an author photo. So I would veer away from doing this. That said, if you want to convey something about yourself, including your identity to a literary agent, then you should feel free to do so in the bio section. Though, please know that it is not a requirement by any means to disclose your age, identity, race, or any of that. So if you want to, or if it's particularly relevant to your story, the bio would be a place to do that. Agents will definitely appreciate having the extra information if you provide it, but know that it is not a necessity for them to evaluate your work. And first and foremost, they are going to be looking at the strength of the manuscript itself. Here's the next question. Do you think that writing on the whim is better than outlining? I used to write on the whim, but it gets disorganized and messy. And when I outline, I go back and forth to change the query letter and my pitch. Ah, the endless debate between whether to plot or pants your novel. I truly believe that both plotting and pantsing are valid ways to go about drafting your book. And I work with authors who fall into both categories, who are equally successful in their careers. Both have pros and cons, of course. When you are pantsing a novel, you may find that when it comes time to revise, you will have to work in larger structural changes because you didn't plot it out from the beginning. And now to make sure you have a cohesive story, you need to go back and revise for making sure that the arc of the story is really solid. Plotting, on the other hand, requires a lot of work up front, and some authors simply can't conceptualize what the story is without just diving right into it. So plotting is not even an option for them. Whether you plot or you pants the novel, you are still likely going to go through major revisions through the developmental editing process. So I'd say what's more important is your openness to revising and strengthening the story, no matter what the first draft looks like. And I would lean into the drafting style that works for you and helps you get the story on the page the easiest. Not every plotting technique works for every author. And as I always say, there is no right way to write. Before we get into the final question today, I wanted to make sure you knew about my newsletter website, chapter-break.com. I'm building this out as another hub of resources for aspiring authors, including exclusive interviews with publishing industry professionals 
and successfully published authors. They're giving some amazing insights that I don't want you to miss out on. So by just giving me your email address, you will get all of that plus my free story self-assessment worksheet, which is a quiz I designed to help you look at your draft from a new perspective and see what to improve on the next one. The links to download my free story self-assessment and check out chapter break are in the description. Here's the final question today. Hi Alyssa, my current work in progress is a hybrid between a novella length narrative with short stories, each with their own plots intermixed. The short stories are all presented as flashbacks starring the main character. Is such an idea appropriate for a debut author to try and query? I want to get formally published, but I don't feel I'm putting my best foot forward. There are no genres that are off limits to debut authors. While it may be harder for a debut author to get a book deal for a novella or a short story collection or something in between, it's not impossible and you never know unless you try, right? If this is the form that you've determined the story needs to be told in, then do your best to make this the strongest possible manuscript and present it to literary agents and see what they think. It may be that an agent shares your vision for the book and thinks it's amazing and wants to work with you to bring it to a publishing house, even if it's not in a typical genre. I want to unpack what you said when you said you're not putting your best foot forward. If you feel there is still work you could do to strengthen the manuscript, I recommend doing that as much as you can now before you query so that you give it your best shot and present them the best version of this story. But if you are concerned about the genre not falling into the publishing industry typical roster, then I would try to resist that if you feel that this format and style of storytelling is true to the vision that you have for it. Because what the publishing industry thinks is trending or thinks works at any given moment can change on a whim. And maybe they don't know that they need a novella short story hybrid until they see it. Set realistic expectations for yourself in understanding that this might be a harder type of book to get published, but don't shut down the possibility before you've even tried. I recommend going for it. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question. And if you have something you'd like to ask, drop it in the comments here and it will be added to my queue for my next session. Before you head out, don't forget to grab your free story self-assessment worksheet and check out my link to chapter break and hit that subscribe button to join our amazing community. Before you sign off, just give me a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.